Welcome. Welcome. This is the day the Lord has made. The introid. This is funky version. Yes, you got good one there. Page 657. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice. Welcome. Are there any announcements? This is a birthday week. We have four of us that have birthdays this week. Tomorrow is Rick Warfield's, Tuesday is Sally Stevens, Friday is mine, and Saturday is Vicky's. Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Well, as you can hear, Mary Ann's away today doing uh, commencement at Ithaca College. So I'll be leading the worship, and Connie is going to be playing the songs that Sue Boone helped pick out. I want to thank you all. Are there any other announcements? Our call to worship, if we could stand to read in unison, 677. Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord we, we come this morning, this morning knee bowed, bowed and body bent before, before thy throne of grace. grace. Oh Lord, Lord this, this morning, morning bow our hearts, knees, <laughs> our knees, with our knees in some lonesome valley. We come this morning like empty pitchers to a full fountain with no merits of our own. O oh Lord, open up a window of heaven and lean out far over the battlements of glory and listen this morning. Amen. I wanted to add to that as we sit down. Oh, we're going to sing. Now, let us listen this morning to our yearnings and give us grace that only you can provide through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, opening hymn, He Lives, number 364.
Psalter lesson will be next, as we have no children. Our Psalter for today is found on page 790 and 791. Psalm 66, 8 through 20. O people, be glad and sing for joy. Declare God's glory in every land. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of God's praise be heard who has kept us among the living, and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our loins. We let people cry over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us forth to a spacious place. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, that which my lips uttered, and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fatlings, with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear all who worship God. And I would tell that God has done it for me. And I cried out to God, who was highly praised to my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened and has given heed to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer or removed his step. And all God's people said, and concerns. We'll have Joy's first. Peggy? <laughs> they wanted me to share with you. Somebody I knew uh, that was like good luck if a bird like landed on your windowsill or was looking in your windows. Anybody ever heard of that? So in his um, preparation for the service, as if it were some reassurance, we pulled into the parking lot, parked under that tree, and a baby bird landed on the windshield wiper and <laughs> sat there. <laughs> so it was like, oh, this, <laughs> this little birdie just sat, right? Just fluttered out of nowhere, sat on the windshield wiper. Yeah, oh, cool. <laughs> Here's little thing. Huh? Are there other joys? Our new driveway out here. Yes. Yes. Did you did you do that? Pardon? Did you do that? In my spare time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is something. Yeah. That was a beautiful weekend. Yeah. It was so gorgeous. Was gorgeous. Any other? Coffee hour today. Yes, that was an announcement we forgot. Coffee yeah. hour. Yeah, I want to eat all our shells. <laughs> <laughs> I um great niece in uh, West Virginia is graduating from high school Friday and she had drug addicted parents and stuff. My sister ended up taking her in so it's a blessing that she made it through and she's mm -hmm. yeah, graduating from high school and going on to a community college. So Praise the Lord. Yes. And um but we, I had Corey's brother, which I still, he has not been at work. Um, that was a co-worker of Jerry. His brother got the head-on motorcycle accident. He actually woke up and um, was talking to them. Um, and 
shockingly, I mean, they have him on a lot of morphine and all that because he's badly injured, but um, they were thrilled they even woke up to say anything. So, what? you know, I still want to find out what his first name is, but, um, you know, obviously still needs a lot of prayers. Concerns? She fell twice and her knees are so weak, so the doctor said the muscles are wasting. So she hit her head on the countertop and she's all black and blue around her eyes. And you know those bones here below your eyes, they are so painful when you hit them. So now she has all these scars in her face from twice uh, surgery on the uh, cancer. Of course, the first time it wasn't deep enough, they still found cancer cells, another surgery. I don't know how she keeps being alive. Surgery after surgery. Mm -hmm. And she needs her prayer. Astrid Walker. Oh. Ed? Yeah, I uh, have a co-worker in Syracuse. She works in our county department. Her husband is 52 years old. And I asked her, I said, do you mind if I put you up, you know, you have know, some thing on the paralysis? And she said, anything will help. Mm -hmm. He started in October treating for bladder cancer. He's taken all types of new chemo, radiation. It spread to his entire body and sent to his skull now. In stage four. And they've tried about the last treatment they can. And you're supposed to go to this last therapy for a scan to see what it's doing. So, I think it's in God's hands now. What's his name? What's his name? Phil Kenyon, K E N Y O N. Any other concerns, Carolyn? I believe we probably better put Bob and Cindy Spicer on the list. I've heard through the grapevine that he's going in for prostate surgery oh. on Wednesday, I believe. So next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Yeah. So it was cancerous. Any other concerns? Let us pray. It is amazing to us that the Lord of the universe would take time to listen to us and care about what we say. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. We sometimes take for granted the good things that happen in our lives. Let us realize that it is through you that we are blessed. Thank you, Lord, for being there for us and allowing us to cry out to you in our times of need. God, there are things happening right now that we do not understand. Some of these things make us feel weak, helpless, and afraid. Even in the midst of this, we know that you are the Lord. We know that the situation is in your hand, and we trust you. We beseech you for strength and for wisdom that we would be able to endure the situations we encounter and be able to handle it in a way that would bring glory to your name. As we say the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we'll have our offerings to the Lord.
Lord, you provide us with everything that we need. You have blessed us with many opportunities to do what is right and true. You never ask us to wait when we cry out for your name. You provide us counsel in times of sorrow and grief. You share us joy in times of celebration and glee. Today, teach us how to dedicate our lives only for your glory. Teach us to become a blessing to others, even to those who do not know. Encourage us to follow the footsteps of your Son, Jesus Christ, as he has the ultimate example of what is good in a person. Teach us to reject all evil things. Keep us away from temptation and mend the hearts of those who are hurt. May these tithes and offerings multiply. <coughs> and it may be of help to those who are in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our congressional anthem is... 467. Trust and obey. <coughs> as we are all standing, all stay. <laughs> you are eager to do what is good. But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through the water, and baptism, which is this, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with the angels, authorities and powers made subject to him. And all God's people said, Amen. Our hymn of preparation. Be Still My Soul, found on page 534 in your hymnal. And as we all stand...
may be seated. This is a long gospel. Titles. Our gospel lesson is Acts 17, verses 16 to 31. In Athens, while Paul was waiting for Silas and Timothy, he was greatly distressed to see the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and Gentiles, as well as the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. A group of Epicureans, or seek pleasure seekers and Stoic philosophers, began to debate with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news and about Jesus' resurrection. I love the background. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus. Who's supposed to be reading this? Somebody that knows these big words? <laughs> where, so then, then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus, where they said to him, May we know what this new teaching is that you're presenting? You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we would like to know what they mean. All the Athean, all, yeah, all the Athians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Aragapus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples made by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath, and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human skill and design. In the past, God overlooked such, such ignorance but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed, Jesus. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that Paul left the council. Some of the people became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysius, a member of the Areopagus, also a woman named Damaris, and a number of others. And, uh, and this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Come now. So this is my little prayer. Come now, put aside your busyness for a while. Take refuge for a time from your troublesome thoughts 
throw away your cares, and let your burdens and worries wait. Take some time off for God. Rest a while in Him. Enter the secret room of your mind. Put out everything except God and for whatever helps you to find Him. Close the door of your mind and seek God. Say now to God with all your heart, I seek your face, Lord, your face I seek. I wish I could take credit for that, but it was St. Asselum from 1093. God gave me words. God, give me words you want me to say and the thoughts to uh, put this all together. In Jesus' name, amen. As we listen to the message today, let us pretend we are there with Paul as he discusses God and explains who Jesus is and how Jesus came to save us. So my meditation today is spreading God's word. The study notes from Life Applications Bible are always my way to help understand what is being said here. So to begin, Athens, with its magnificent buildings and many gods, was a center for Greek culture, philosophy, and education. Philosophers and edu educated men were always ready to hear something new, so they invited Paul to speak to them at the meeting of the Aragapis, the high council of the city. Paul was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. The word translated distressed is the Greek word for paroxysms, meaning sudden, violent emotion. Paul was filled with a combination of anger and grief, seeing people spiritually lost, blinded by Satan, trapped in a pagan culture, caused Paul to be in a state of emotional upheaval. Though highly educated, the Athians were ignorant of the one true God. It's interesting to note that Paul turned his internal turmoil into positive action. He looked for opportunities to share the truth about Jesus. Does this loss, does lostness of people move you to action? And if so, do you seek opportunities to share the gospel? What's interesting about, and I forgot my cross, but uh, with the cross ministry, that is one way that we can do that. The, Epigapa, the Epicureans and the Stoics were the dominant philosophers in Greek culture. The Epicureans believed that seeking happiness or pleasure was the primary goal in life. By contrast, the Stoics placed thinking above feeling and tried to live in harmony with nature and reason, suppressing their desire for pleasure. They were very disciplined. For a time, the council met on a hill low on a low hill in Athens near the Acropolis. As Paul stood there and spoke about the one true God, his audience could look down on the city and see the many idols representing gods that Paul knew were worthless. Paul was well prepared to speak to this group. He came from Taurus, an educational center, and had the training and knowledge to present his beliefs clearly and persuasively. Paul was a rabbi, taught by the finest scholar of his day, Gamaliel, and he has spent much of his life thinking and reasoning through the scriptures. It is not enough to teach or preach with conviction. Like Paul, we must be prepared. The more we know about the Bible, what it means, and how to apply it to life, the more convincing our words will be. This does not mean we should avoid presenting the gospel until we feel adequately, adequately prepared. We should work with what we have learned, but always seek to know more in order to be an effective witness and to be able to respond to people's questions and arguments. 
Paul's address is a good example of how to communicate the gospel. Paul did not begin by reciting Jewish history, as he usually did, for this would have been meaningless to the Greeks. He began by building a case for the one true God, using examples that they would understand. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Aragapis and said, People of Athens, I see that every way you are very religious. For as I walked around here, looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The Athens have built an idol to the unknown God for fear of missing blessings or receiving punishment. Paul's opening statement to the men of Athens was about their unknown God. Paul was not endorsing this God, but using the inscription as a point of entry for his witness to the one true God. Then he established common ground by em emphasizing what they did agree on God and about God. Finally, he moved this message to the person of Christ, centering on the resurrection. When you witness to others, you can follow Paul's approach. Use examples, establish common ground, then move people toward a decision about Jesus Christ. Paul explained the one true God to those educated men of Athens. Although these men were in general very religious, they did not know God. Today we have a Christian society, but to most people, God is still unknown. We need to proclaim who he is and make clear what he did for everyone through his son, Jesus Christ. We cannot assume that even religious people around us truly know Jesus or understand the importance of faith in him. God is in the creation and close to every one of us, but he is not trapped in his creation. He is transcendent. God is the creator, not the creation. This means that God is sovereign and in control, while at the same time he is close and personal. Let's leave the creator, let's leave the creator of the universe rule our life. Paul did not leave this message unfinished. He confronted his listeners with Jesus' resurrection and its meaning to all people. It's either a blessing or a punishment. Greeks had no concept of judgment. Most of them preferred worshiping many gods instead of just one. And the concept of resurrection was unbelievable and offensive to them. Paul did not hold back the truth, however, no matter what they think of it. Paul often changed his approach to fit his audience but he never changed his basic message. Paul's speech received a mixed reaction. Some laughed, some wanted more information, and a few believed. Don't hesitate to tell others about Christ because you fear that some will not believe you. Don't expect a unanimously positive response to your witnessing. Even if only a few believe, it's worth the effort. Let us go forth with confidence that our Lord Jesus Christ is with us every step of the way and do not fear with God on our side who can be against us. Amen. Amen. Closing him, breathe on me, breath of God. I think Connie's got it already. <laughs> Should. <laughs> Page 420. As we stand,
benediction. Let us say that in unison. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And our benediction hymn, God be with you till we meet again. Page 672 in your hymn. God be with you till we meet again.